Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from round 6 of this year's Tata Steel Chess Masters. Uh, it is Nodrebek Abdusatarov versus Anishgiri, two rivals uh, from last year's Tata Steel Chess Masters event. Uh, Nodrebek finished with 8 points last year and Anish with 8.5 points. Nodrebek had shared second with Magnus Carlsen and Anish um, uh, won the tournament in sole, sole first place. Uh, so it was an incredible, uh, incredible victory for Anish and of course he would very much like to win this year as well, make it two years in a row. Uh, but Nodrebek of course uh, as he does have the white pieces against Anish, will try his best for that not to happen. So let's check it out. Uh, with the white pieces, Nodrebek opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e5 by Anish. Uh, he uh, even made a course on this reply. We have knight to f3, knight to f6, going for the Petrov defense, and now knight captures on e5. The main line or the classical variation of the Petrov. Uh, d6 chasing away the knight, knight f3, and now knight captures on e4. And there are many possible uh, continuations here. D4 is the main move, knight to c3, second most popular, queen to e2, third most popular, d3, fourth most popular, Nodrebek goes for pawn to c4. This is the fifth most popular continuation against uh, this line of the Petrov. And he says, all right, Anish, uh, let's see let's see what you got here. Uh, so, okay, bishop to e7, of course, Anish knows uh, how to play this line. Uh, but even if you don't, you just want to castle your king to safety as quickly as possible, especially against um, a tactical beast like Nodrebek. Knight to c3, knight captures, d captures, and now... Uh, Anish just castles. We have bishop to d3, uh, knight to d7, and bishop to e3. Nodrebek uh, developing his bishops uh, in the style of Paul Morphy. And there is one game where knight to e5 was played, but Anish just goes for the solid knight f6. And it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, pawn to h3. Uh, Nodrebek, well within his preparation, all of his moves have been made without losing any time. He still has a, an hour and 33 minutes on the clock, which is more than you start with. You start with hour and a half, and Anish did drop down to uh, an hour and 18 minutes with his next pawn to b6 move. So Anish has to figure out how to play against this, um, as you don't just play a move like pawn to h3, you know, blitz it out against a player like Anish, if you don't have it well prepared. So, okay, queen to c2, uh, putting some pressure on that h7 pawn, and bishop to b7. We have queenside castles and now pawn to h6. And um, okay, pawn to h6 is useful. The knight can now move. You don't have to worry about the h7 pawn. And here is the uh, first real thing of the uh, game for Nodrebek. Uh, he spends 20 minutes on this move and he plays rook h to e1. And it's very interesting, especially I found it interesting that when you have castles of opposite sides, you have a white castle queenside, black castle kingside. Your instinct is to, you know, push those pawns on the kingside, checkmate to the, the black king as soon as possible. You have the bishops here. Uh, okay, you probably have to move the rook from h1, but maybe put it to g1, push g4, g5. I mean, it does look great. And even the engine says rook to g1 uh, is, is okay for white. Uh, but Nodrebek played rook h to e1, which just shows uh, what uh, what a classy player he is. Uh, and okay, uh, here we have rook to e8 by Anish, and now bishop to d4. The bishops are now fully operational, uh, controlling these two main diagonals towards the black king, and pawn to c5. Anish says, all right, your bishop can simply remain there, and now bishop captures on f6. Not what you would expect in such an open game for Nodrebek to give up his uh, bishop pair like this, uh, but after Anish played bishop captures on f6, you can see that this setup b to c3 uh, does limit the the power of the bishop on f6. So okay, uh, and here uh, I I think comes the move that I like most uh, in the entire game, and that is bishop to h7 with check. Uh, uh, on you know on first glance it doesn't really do anything. You just give a check, and the black king can actually go to f8 and h8. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but okay, on f8 it could be a, a bit more vulnerable, especially if the bishop moves and you allow the queen to h7, so it makes sense to play uh, king to h8. Uh, but other than that, it doesn't really uh, uh, seem to have any, any great purpose. But uh, as the game progresses, you will see uh, th that it uh, definitely does. Uh, bishop back to e4 now, uh, attacking the undefended bishop on b7, and okay, on each trades here. We have bishop captures, rook captures, and queen to d7, connecting rook. So now if another back trades, you can bring the other rook into the game. Uh, but Nodrebek just plays knight to d2, uh, prepares to uh, advance the f-pawn, and also the knight is now defending the c4 pawn if at any point uh, uh, you play something like pawn to b5. So on each first place pawn to a6, now comes king to b1, just getting the king to a safer square, bishop to g5, and now knight back to f3, attacking the bishop, bishop back to f6 by Anish, and now Nodrebek plays queen to d3, and here comes pawn to b5. Uh, the problem with uh, something like rook captures on e4 and queen captures on e4, 
uh, is that, um, okay, rook to d8 can be played, and now if queen to d5, it doesn't look like much for black, because this is just a permanent weakness, but still, after a move like queen to a4, doesn't seem like white has all that much to do here, it's, um, uh, you know, b5 is coming, could be even nice for black. Uh, but okay, in the game, pawn to b5 was played right away by Anish, and now comes knight back to d2, but not right away, uh, first after b5, Noderbeck um, uh, trades rooks, rook captures an e8, we have queen captures an e8, uh, and now knight to d2. You can't really capture on d6. If you capture on d6, rook d8 wins the game for Anish. So I hope none of you were looking at that pawn. So queen captures on e8, knight to d2. And now, okay, you could open up the b file and it does seem like something you want to do. Uh, you know, you have the bishop, uh, you have the rook here. So maybe, but uh, how do you deal with this d6 weakness? And uh, this doesn't really do anything. Uh, for the moment. So, okay, uh, after knight to d2, queen to e6 was played, putting more pressure on that c4 pawn, now just knight to e4, attacking the bishop, Anish brings it back, and now queen to d5, offering a queen trade, and you can't really afford this queen trade. If you trade queens here, for example, captures, captures, your pawn is still hanging, and if rook to d8, uh, then you just capture, c captures on b5, a captures, and now pawn to b4, and that's it. Uh, the pawn cannot capture, otherwise rook captures on b5, but other other than that, what, what do you play? C captures is coming and you're gonna you're gonna win a pawn regardless of what black plays. So queen to d5, uh, rook to d8, adding a defender to the d6 pawn, and now just c captures on b5, a captures, and pawn to f4. It's a really, another really classy move by Noderbeck, uh, as uh, uh, stops g5, f5 cannot be played as the queen is hanging, so Anish is really, really limited in his options, and uh, what he can play something like pawn to g6, although it's very hard to say what this move does, other than prevent f5, uh, he goes king back to g8. He knows that if he wants to survive this and trade down into some sort of endgame, the king really should come to the queen side. And now that little check that Noderbeck gave on h7, forcing the Anish's king to h8, uh, means that Anish is a tempo down in uh, moving the king over to the queen side. So now pawn f5, attacking the queen, and you have to go back. Queen to c8, and then, you know, you just suffer in a, in a worse position. But Anish decided to trade queens here, and here comes uh, rook captures on d5, king to f8, and now pawn to b4. Uh, again, uh, capturing uh, doesn't really do anything, b5 will fall, so king to e8 and now king to b2, Noderbeck also improves the position of his king and now uh, rook to d7, trying to get his king into the game uh, this way, uh, but uh, it doesn't work. Here there is a very strong reply, pawn to g4. Uh, and now, after king to d8, uh, feel free to pause the video and figure out what Noderbeck played here. Uh, win the position for white while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, <clears throat> for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this uh, rather explosive idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to c4. This is the move, and now uh, you, you realize that there is no way of holding the pawn. Uh, the problem is, if you play c captures on b4, uh, then c captures on b5. And now after king to c7, just king to b3, and after let's say king b6, you will capture here, a4, a5 check. Uh, that's it. There's no no way out of this. So B captures and C4 was played. Now B captures and C5. Uh, D captures and C5 because if you go king to C7 to try and defend, again, you just trade everything. Captures and after bishop captures, you'll play rook captures, rook captures, knight captures, captures, king goes here, king goes here. And okay, your pawn is defended. It's equal material, but pawn A4, A5, black king will have to go after the pawn. You will capture this pawn, uh, pick up all of these pawns and... Uh, it's a it's a very easy elementary endgame to win. So d captures on c5 was played, uh, but it doesn't help. Rook captures on d7, king captures, and king to c3 now. This is a crucial move to play. Uh, king to c6, and now king captures on c4. So similar to the endgame that we discussed, only with the inclusion of the bishop and knight on the board. Uh, however, that doesn't change anything um, uh, in Anisha's favor. So king to b6, now comes pawn to a4. We have king back to c6, waiting to see what Noderbeck will do. Uh, or, okay, you could go king to a5, uh, as we've discussed, but knight captures on c5, uh, defends the pawn. And if you trade, then it's what we've discussed. Uh, then uh, the, the white king just picks up all the pawns uh, and uh, wins the game easily. So after pawn to a4, king to c6 was played, and now knight to f2. 
this is move 40, so time control has been reached with bishop to d8 and the knight to e4 now, putting pressure on the pawn. So again, Anish defends it, but now pawn to a5. Uh, we have bishop back to d8, now comes pawn to a6. And it does, does look like you're weakening the pawn because the black king can attack it, but uh, uh, like we said, knight captures on c5, uh, just defends the pawn, and if you attack it, it doesn't really do anything. For example, bishop to e7, uh, pretty much any move wins here. You can even play king to d5, and if bishop captures, you just play a7. King captures, king captures, and again, your king is much closer. You will pick up the pawns, and your pawns uh, will advance to become queens. So after a6, bishop to e7 was played, and now uh, there is but one way that you can win this game. So feel free to pause the video and, uh, you know, win it while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so, for those of you who were able uh, to do it, congratulations on being true masters of the end game. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight to c3. This is the way to do it. Because it, as you can see, there is no other way to improve your position uh, if, if you just um, uh, move the knight to, to a weird square. Uh, then the king can just go after the pawn. Uh, so it's important to uh, move it somewhere where, where the king cannot go after the pawn. And that is knight to c3. There is also the engine move pawn to f6 because the, the, the capture of the pawn doesn't change the position. You just play knight to c3 after that. So it's the same solution. Uh, but okay, knight to c3. And now uh, the, the problem is if you go king to b6, now knight d5 check picks up the bishop. So the bishop is very poorly placed there. Uh, bishop to g5 was played. Now comes knight to b5. And after bishop to e3, uh, adding a defender here, uh, pawn to h4 by Noderbeck. We have king to b6, now comes pawn to a7, defending the pawn. King to b7, guarding the queening square, and now comes pawn to h5. And here, uh, although the position is completely winning for Noderbeck, Anish even stood up, he uh, took down his jacket, and then he sat down again, trying to, you know, uh, think deeply about the position, about what he could do. And there was even quite the crowd watching the, the local hero of, of uh, Vikanze. You can see a lot of people watching their game. There you have Anish and Noderbeck, um, you know, same, same position, uh, same stance, um, People are, are, are waiting to see if their hero will survive this, uh, but it is very unlikely. King to a8 was played. You could also play pawn to f6, but with pawn to f6, you free up the e6 square for the white king, and then it's a fairly, fairly easy win. Uh, so king to a8 was played. Anisha's plan is now, all right, I move the king back and forth, see, see, see how, how you deal with it. King to d5, king to b7, and now king to d6. And now the problem is, again, if you go king to a8, uh, king to e7, and now let's say pawn to c4, king captures an f7, bishop captures an a7, hoping for knight capture so you can advance the pawn, uh, but the king will just ignore you, and okay now. Uh, the f-pawn wins and the c3 square is still guarded by the knight. So instead, pawn to c4, uh, and now we have king to d5. Going after the pawn, uh, you don't have to turn this into a race or anything. You can just eliminate the pawn and then win the game this way. So bishop captures an a7, knight captures an a7, and now pawn to c3. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Knight to c6, and it seems like there's no way for the knight to actually catch the pass pawn, but after c2, there's the... There there's this check, knight to a5 check, king to c7, and now knight to b3, guarding the queening square. We have king to d7, now comes pawn to, uh, pawn to g5, and here just king to e7. The problem is uh, if you capture the pawn on g5, uh, it's uh, sort of the oldest endgame book, um, uh, endgame trick in the book. Uh, for example, captures f6, threatening captures and promotion, and after black captures all of your pawns, the last remaining pawn will uh, emerge victorious. So after king to e7, g captures and h6 was played, g captures and now king to e5. Uh, pawn to f6 with check, king to e5 with king to d7, and now knight to c1. And he was in this position on move 60 that uh, Noderbeck, uh, well, that Anish Giri resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the position would be winning for, for Noderbeck uh, even uh, without the, the knight and pawn on the board uh, if it was Anish's move because you are in Sukhtwang. And the point is that let's say go king e7, king to c6, there's no king e6 to, you know, uh, to 
uh, maintain opposition and then you have to choose you, you either go king to d8 then white get, gains the opposition and after king to e8 you get king e6 opposition and then you, you start eliminating all of the pawns or the other way around after king c6 and king to d8 uh, or may, uh, king to f7 right away uh, you will again grab a position king d7 after king f8 moves now you go to e6 and after king to g7 defending again you gain opposition you cannot go here king goes up upwards uh, and now you capture the pawns and uh, promote the, the this df pawn for example so uh, fairly fairly simple stuff uh, and of course after knight to c1 uh, anish was forced to resign the game so yeah uh, very nicely done by noderbeck uh, last year uh, he uh, he uh, was uh, undefeated for the entire tournament and then he lost the final game to, to Jordan Van Forest uh, and uh, that was uh, what enabled Anish to, to clinch first place. Uh, but uh, uh, let me just check if the other games have finished. No, they're still being played and some, some very, very interesting uh, development. Wow. Uh, one of the games that everyone was sure was going to be a draw seems that it will not be a draw. Uh, but I'm not going to spoil anything, you know, probably we'll cover it, so uh, stay tuned uh, until that time comes. Uh, so I once again hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Brian Paquin, uh, Johan Klesens, uh, Len Herbert Union, uh, and Christopher and Ruth Burkett for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff by Noderbeck here. Uh, see you soon.